How's it going? Well, last night went pretty, pretty good, actually, and so I'm back again. Uh, it's got colder out here, actually, so I got the sweater on again. Uh, we're in Florida, so we don't normally wear a sweater, but uh, still enjoying the bib and tucker, actually. Uh, I don't know where it came from. Somebody got it as a gift there, but very, very good. I hope you have something to drink and hang out with me for Jazz After Dark. I don't know if that's what we'll call this, but in my little home studio here, and um, I want to use this time to go over things that are maybe more thoughtful. Right, so the goal is not to just rush through everything like we do in our other videos and give you the tips and get out of the way. I want this to be geared towards people that are taking a little bit more serious their investing, their dollars, budgeting, their retirement, uh, maybe their kids going to college and stuff. So I want, I want to really focus on more specifics here. Um, it's likely that a lot of you that will stick around and watch this are working with some kind of financial advisor, financial planner. If not, of course, I'm biased. I hope you check us out, but but be sure to check somebody out. Go go shop around and look. They won't bite. Most of them won't bite. <laughs> but if you need help, of course, we can just help you with that. If you don't like us and you say, well, who's a good advisor that's in my area or something? Maybe we know somebody. Right? If not, we'll just tell you. Um, so I want to talk about the upcoming recession. Right? In my opinion, the economy is going to have the soft landing that the Fed wants. Um, now, if I'm wrong, then that means recession. So the definition of a soft landing is that rates and the monetary supply can get tighter without driving us into a recession. They want to get us right to the cusp of it, right? So inflation comes down and they could be a little looser with, with money again, um, maybe. But uh, if that doesn't happen, and so far it's working perfectly, by the way. Everything that the Fed wants, they are getting. Every data point says right now soft landing. I'll probably cover some of this on the closing beat because I think it's important to follow that. Otherwise, the media makes you think, you know, things are pretty nasty out there. Uh, so four things to get you through the next recession, whether it's next year or another year from now or something. There will be another recession. So what can you do? The first thing is, if you're working with an advisor or a planner, you should already have gone through this, right? You should talk about specifically, now this is a little touchy here, and old Dustin's not known for doling out the feel goods, but I want you to just think about this for a second. How do you feel about, did I just say that? <laughs> How, that's the Bib and Tucker talking. How do you feel about your investments going down? If I threw a number at you, 5%, could you handle that? Well, I hope so, because that happens like five times a year, right? So that's something normal. Um, but what if I said 10% or like we saw in 2022 this year, uh, 25%? How does that make you feel, right? Really ask yourself that. And the first thing I want you to do is go talk to your advisor. Talk with your uncle if that's who's helping you, your parents, whatever it is. But you got to talk through that because if you feel like you're the only one going through a downturn, you know you're not, right? For every body that's going through some tough financial condition, I promise you there's somebody doing something even worse. And it goes the other way around. For every single person that thinks, I got this thing figured out, man, I got it. Somebody else is way ahead of you. And it's just the nature of the beast, right? Who's at the ultimate top and who's at the bottom? We, we don't know. We'll never figure it out. But I want to know from that advisor, if you're working with them or from us, what's the plan, man? What are we doing? When we go through a recession, are we ready ahead of time? Or are we just going to grin and bear it? What is it? I don't know what the right answer is for you, but whatever it is you don't want to deal with, that's what you need to talk about there. More importantly, how bad could it hurt specifically with your investments? Specifically, how bad will your account get hurt? If the market goes down 25%, will you fall 25? Right? I, I don't know. It depends on where you're at. Let me give you an example here. How do we do this? Uh, let's look over here. So... I pretended, uh, from making this here, I pretended that we have two different clients coming to me. Client number one is conservative. This is our, this is our actual portfolio. Uh, so this is, we call it the, the medium term conservative portfolio, meaning you don't have long term to go and you can't be aggressive. This, okay, how far, that's the black line there, how far does this portfolio fall after hitting a new high? So the zero line is every time it's at a high, and then obviously the low is how far that it's fallen. And so uh, the conservative fund this year has fallen over 
that's how bad this year has been, right? So even your target date funds and your real slow things out there, yeah, they've fallen double digits. This is not an anomaly in any way, right? Almost as bad as COVID down here. So if you could see this, if you were invested in this conservative fund with us here at Jazz, I would show you this. If you said, I, I, I want to know how bad it can get, I would just pull this up and show it to you and go, here's COVID, right? That was pretty nasty. That's the worst it got, 18%. Here's this year, pretty bad. All in all, though, basically you're looking at about 6%, 7% drawdowns from highs. And you'd go, I, okay, I can live with that. That's fine. We're not collapsing. So that works. That's how you know if you're in the right investment. Contrary to that, or on the complete opposite side, you might have noticed that orange line there. That is not one of our funds, but it's a mix of our funds that we consider to be aggressive. We call it the aggressive mix. Our clients know you would see it right there when you log in. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, well, that's a lot nastier, right? It doesn't mean this mix of funds is any bad. It's not worse, but it is more volatile than the conservative fund. It's very similar to con uh, comparing like a 2020 target date fund to a 2050. They perform different because the investments are more aggressive, right? And so if you had just told me that, look, I can live with six or 10%, that's fine. I could deal with that if we go into a recession or the stock market sells off ahead of a recession, but I don't wanna see 25%. I don't know if I can handle that. I'd probably do something silly. Well, then you know right there, Right? Tip number one, you're talking to your advisor, you're giving him the emotion. He should read up on that in your face or however, email, however you contact him or her and go, um, well, then I think we should make a change. They may disagree with you. A lot of times clients get a little fearful and I'm like, look, you know, you got to sort of grab them and hold on tight, right? This is what's going to happen, right? I'm doing my job. Uh, but if you can't handle it and that's not in your nature, usually from something in your family, then cool, we need to make a change. So tip number one there is you gotta talk with somebody, right? your advisor or whoever it may be. That's a long way of getting to a simple tip there. Uh, tip number two, increase your risk where you can. Think about it, if you could go back to 2008, I wish I could, man, I was, I was too young at the time, people didn't really pay much attention to me, but um, if you could go back 2008, really 2009 and 10, and you could invest in something aggressive like Maybe it's a real estate flip project that you might rent out. I don't know what you're going to do with it, right? Or an uh, aggressive stock, Apple or some, the Tesla back in that day. Amazon was pretty well beaten up, right? If you could go back and do it, you know you would, right? So think about that going forward. There will be another recession. Things will be cheaper. We love a discount. So why not invest in the discount? Run into the fire instead of running away from it. You know you're going to be just fine, right? You may not be fine if you go out right now and invest in, you know, a duplex or something, right? Maybe it's overpriced. I don't know. So think about that. You buy everything else in life when it's at a discount. You go into your account and you say, I want to be a little more aggressive if you can there, right? Now, I want you to think about that. I'm not telling you if you're 50 and you've been investing nice and cautious to go swing for the fences. I'm telling you to think of it like this. You're 50. And let's say you want to retire at 60. Okay, what about the small chunk of money that you won't need until you're 85? That's 25 years away. 25 years until you're going to touch that money. That money can be aggressive, right? It doesn't have to be in the 2030 fund or some bond because somebody told you you have to be conservative. Yes, with the money that you're going to need in the next 7 to 10 years, but everything after that should stay aggressive. Well, if it's not, and we go into a recession or this market's pulled back and you go, <laughs> that makes total sense. I'm 50 now. I won't need some of this money till I'm 85, 84, 83, or whatever. I got 30 plus years until I need it. Let's go be aggressive. So think about that, right? Uh, tip number three, what do we got down here? Um, okay, when it comes to retirement, save the get rich quick stuff for your fun money. I'm all for it. Lottery tickets, not meaning in the literal sense, but you maybe you find an investment you think is a long shot, but if it pays out, it'll be a great investment. Everybody's got one, right? Uh, think about that. I can't tell you how many people I've seen that are stuck in pot stocks, are stuck in alternative plant-based meat stocks, stuck in the meme stocks from when that was a thing, right? 3D printing stocks. I only know this, right? Because this is what's going on. How many NFTs? How many times 
did things like that come up? I just named a bunch of them that took us back the last six years. All those things happened in the last six years, and it seemed like that was the greatest thing, you know it, since sliced bread, right? So you get stuck in these things. It's okay with your fun money, right? You, you want to play with GameStop or whatever. Nobody's going to pick on you for that. Um, the, my favorite one was the pot stocks, right? Nobody or everybody wanted to invest in pot stocks. Not one single person could see that's a commodity. And if everybody rushes money into it, we'll have more pot on the planet than we know what to do with. Therefore, the price of that commodity goes down, right? It's like if everybody started planting corn, not everybody can plant corn, right? There has to be an equal supply and demand or at least some excess level of demand. So uh, careful on those, those, I call them lottery ticket type plays, right? It's a long shot. It might be a long time before you see your money again. Use the fund money for that, right? Because if it doesn't work out, you can take a tax loss for that failed investment. You can't do that in your retirement accounts, right? So there's at least a benefit to a losing investment there. And finally, tip number four, um, if you got care of, your savings rate is good, everything is nice and dialed in, and you, you have extra money. If you got your dough straight, then, okay, invest more when things are cheaper. Kind of alludes to what I was saying just a minute ago. If things are cheaper, we want more of it, right? Or at least we want to be one of the buyers. So the market will get cheaper again in the future. Maybe it bounces from here and we enjoy another couple year rally. It's going to get cheaper. If you can invest a few more dollars there, that's easier said than done because when the economy gets weaker, you may be drawing from your emergency fund. You may be slowing down your investments because costs have went up. Inflation, hello, right? But if you can, you will not regret. Now, I'm not saying just the stock market either. If housing prices get cheaper, if you've always wanted uh, to start a car, a uh, classic car business and sell classic cars, but when those get cheaper, right? The investments you make, maybe you want to buy a restaurant or something, I don't know. Uh, do it when things are cheaper. Put a little bit more money away. Whatever your future goals are, that's what you do. All right. Now, oh, one last thing. Uh, if you say, well, when things get cheap, I will invest in the market extra money. Careful. Don't go nuts here, right? I'm probably the only advisor that's ever going to tell you this. If you're putting 5% in your 401k and you just go wild and you say, I'm going to make it 15%, uh, just careful, right? Because that's good and I'm excited for you. But if you accidentally save too much, now you have penalties and taxes for that mistake. So I'd, I'd rather you not get too excited. You got to know your numbers now, okay? I've seen that too, where people say, oh my God, COVID, the market just fell apart. I want to buy. Oh my God, COVID, uh, my job is gone now. I need that money back. That just cost you 10% plus taxes. That was not good. That's a horrible thing. Uh, anyways, that's all I got. Four tips for you to make it through the next recession. Number one, talk with your advisor. Have a heart to heart, man, right? Go for it there. Uh, two, increase your risk where you can for those dollars later in life there. Tip number three, save the get rich quick stuff for the fun money. Uh, how many of you can relate to that? Right? Come, you out there, I know you're out there, right? You put money in something. I, I made a video of my big mistake. I put money in a penny stock. I had a, the inside scoop on it and uh, not illegally. And uh, yeah, it worked out really well and then it didn't. <laughs> so uh, I made mine public. Uh, but, and then tip number four, invest more if you can, but only if you have your dough straight. And yeah, you know what I mean by that. If you don't have your dough straight, if you can't wear a sweater like that, then don't, don't invest more. All right, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me here in the evening time. What do you think of these evening videos? Am I wasting my time here? Or should we continue with maybe a little more geeky stuff? Hmm. Let me know.